Well, hey there. Sharon Hornell's from here, but you can call me Pajama Grandma. In case we haven't met yet, and it's the first time you're being exposed to the grandma, please put hashtag pajama in the comments below so that I know. I love um, meeting new people and finding out when people are just first discovering me because I've been hanging out for the better part of this year, trying to find my voice, doing Facebook Lives, trying to figure stuff out. And some things I figured out, some things I'm still having trouble with and struggling with as I transition from the offline brick and mortar world of businesses and corporate America to the online world. And I'm doing a new 30 day challenge. I started yesterday. It's actually going to be 30 plus. I'm thinking it's going to be a minimum of 55 days. And we're going to, at day 55, I'm going to announce a contest. I might announce it sooner than that, but probably not till about day 55. And then we'll probably do five days for the contest. And on day 60, we'll announce the winners. I don't know. We might have to stretch it out a little longer than that because I think we want to get user-generated voting and things. So it's not just my opinion who the winner is or my team's opinion who the winner is. It's people get to say in who the winner is as well. Um, <clears throat> but that's kind of exciting because it, it's... It's the softer side, the more creative side. It's the 10% art part of supersizing your business that I'm working on. And so it's the topics that are harder for me personally and probably harder for a lot of people, uh, depending on the type of business that you have that you're trying to grow. Um, you know, some of us have heartfelt businesses, and so then it's easier and we're more in tune with those things. I'm not one of them. Others, well, I guess I kind of am. Other people have... Uh, more straightforward businesses. This is what we do, you know, engineering. When I think of my engineering work, this is what we do. This is how we do it. This is the process and the procedure we use to follow to do a project. And it's pretty cut and dried. And that's the science part of supersizing your business. And the last 30 day challenge I did was all about that. It walked through everybody. It walked you through the process from day one to day 30, because I did a 30, 31 day bonus challenge, challenge of what you really need to do to understand the process of supersizing your business. And so that was kind of the 90% science part, the part that's the, chain, the same for everybody. No matter what type of business you have, there is a process that you can follow to grow and supersize that business or to create whatever you want. It's the same as any creation process um, because we're it's whatever we want to create, whether you're taking an idea and you want to change that and actually manifest that in the world, the process is the same of doing that as it is of getting any other result that you want. And there's a lot of fancy ways to complicate it. And there's a lot, there's as many people as are on this planet, ways to actually implement and do it and have ever been on this planet um, to make our lives be whatever it is that we want them to be, to make our businesses be whatever it is that we want them to be. So I was working on actually my assignment because when I do a challenge, I don't just make it up for other people to do. I actually go through and I do the challenge right along with you myself again. And I I may have done these activities a hundred times before, but I'm still going to do it again because every time I do it, I learn something new and I have more realizations. I was going through my past because yesterday was um, right that just right down key things to remind you of stories from your past, things that you would remember from your past. So I was going through mine, my last past one, and I realized that I had two whole businesses that I'd worked for and companies I'd worked for in corporate America that I had forgotten to write down when I first brainstormed this list. And so I wrote them down and added them to my list because I was kind of curious how many big corporate jobs I'd had, like big companies like Fortune 10 companies, and I have kind of a mix of experience there, but I have, a, I have, you know, one, two, three, four really big companies that I've worked for in my career, and I've got two big companies that I've worked for in my career, and I've got one, two, three, four, five smaller companies that I work for in my career, and then I've, I haven't added it up yet, but I have to add up the number of businesses that I have had in my past because I want to share that in a presentation that I do but I've just been kind of scared to count them up. <laughs> I know that's silly but there's been a lot but I I'm doing it right along with everybody else so yesterday was the past and today I haven't done it yet but today 
I challenged everyone to write down your current situation and write it down from a couple of perspectives. Number one, if you were writing a news article or you were a blast in the newspaper, what would the article say? So it's the who, what, where, when, why, and how of your current situation. But then I said, also do a backstory, do a behind the scenes in depth story of what's really going on in your business. And only you're gonna see that, but do that for yourself. So it was kind of a two part exercise. So I have to do that. I haven't done it yet today. I'll do it as I'm processing my content today. I will actually do that. But I think it's really interesting to go through and look at and realize that even after all this time, after doing the same exercise, and I know I've done this exercise dozens and dozens of times, because every time I ask a coaching student or every time I ask an organization I'm working with to do this, I usually think about and revisit my own list. But this is the first time I found and pulled out this book and have actually looked at the This is one of the original lists that I made as I was on an airplane traveling somewhere. And so it's fun to go back and look at it and say, I am never going to run out of stories to tell <laughs> or things to say. I mean, people talk about running out of content for their Facebook lives. But I got to tell you, if I ever need any content, all I have to do is open this book and it is full of <clears throat> brainstorm list of my experiences. And that's five pages long. Just And it's just a one word thing that triggers a thought of an experience I've had in my past. You know, I'm, I'm old and 58, and so I've had lots of experiences. It's got all my past jobs, my businesses, um, things I like and things that I don't like. And those lists are long, man. I had to start two pages for my likes and dislikes, which I thought it was funny because I didn't realize that I didn't like that many things. Um, stuff that I have been, places I've worked, roles I've played, businesses I've owned, certifications and trainings and things I've taken. And I didn't even finish that list. I wrote down the most current one I was doing at the time was CFCP, which is Certified Partner Program for ClickFunnels. And I wrote that down, but I I quit keeping track of all the courses and training I took back in corporate America because I would take advantage of any learning opportunity that I could get back then. So any seminar, any training that I could get or take, I would not, I mean, if it had to be kind of relevant to my job or I wouldn't do it, but that's where I first, you know, got to go to Tony Robbins. That's where I first got to go to a lot of really incredible training programs that started me on my lifelong learning course. But this little book is gold for me. So I, I keep it close to my vest and I never lose it because it's got so much information in it. But working on the daily challenge going to tell you, I spent a lot of time yesterday cleaning up my Facebook because Facebook had another algorithm change and scare and some very amazing people that I know actually got their Facebook shut down. One person it was less than a day, so that was good. Um, but I backed up my entire Facebook. I'd never done it in the nine or I think I've been on there almost 10 years that I've been on Facebook. I had never backed up. I never even thought about backing up. I've backed up my LinkedIn but I never even thought about backing up my Facebook. So I backed up my entire Facebook yesterday. And then I cleaned up my personal page. I took off anything that could have been considered businessy. But I like to practice my webinars there because I've got 5,000 people on that group. And even though they're not my ideal market, it's a safe place where I have friends that will give me honest feedback on, yeah, Sharon, you can't say that. That, that stinks. That sounds stupid. Don't say that. Or don't use that story. It takes... 10 minutes to tell when all you need to do is share a one minute story and people would get it better than you sharing your rambling 10 minute story. So I took my webinars off. I took off. I had a couple of customer um, lead magnet shares that I shared there as we were building online. I shared them to my page to demonstrate to them how to share them. And I didn't think it mattered, but I had to go back and I took those off. I had a couple of invitations to lead magnets I took off. So now my whole stream is just like, all of my videos and the YouTube of my videos and, you know, a couple of other things thrown in. But I just was like, it took hours and not because I had a lot of stuff. It took hours because Facebook was so slow because I suspect everybody else on the planet was cleaning up their Facebook profiles yesterday. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so, <clears throat> and things come up like that in our businesses, in our life that we just have to stop what we're doing 
and do the most urgent thing at hand. And none of us want our Facebook shut down. I lost my Facebook account for five days in May, and I'm in the middle of a 365-day challenge. So I had to get really creative on how was I going to meet the needs of that challenge when I couldn't do it on Facebook Live. Well, of course, I always figure stuff out because I believe anything's possible. So I figured it out. It took me, a, you know, maybe an hour or two to figure it out. But I came up with another way to do it and to, to kind of go around it. And actually, I can't remember. I didn't do it on Instagram. I did it on YouTube, I think. I, I recorded it, put it on YouTube, and then I just shared the video from YouTube. Because at the time of that challenge, we could do that. Now, in the last 30 days, um, the challenge, there was a sub-challenge to the 365-day challenge where we have to go live in the group. Now, that I'm, I'll have to think about that now. What would I have done and how would I have gone live in the group if I didn't have access to my Facebook account <clears throat> and wasn't part of the group? I would probably use one of my kids' accounts and ask to join the group and then do it on one of my kids' accounts. There's always a way to meet your objective and get it done, even if outside forces try to shut us down and impact us. So make sure, I guess my, my clear message and warning today is, do not absolutely positively build your entire life and business and livelihood on anyone else. Always be building and learning and growing and making sure that your skills are honed so that if anything outside of you happens, you... You have a way to recover. You have a way to make sure that you are going to be okay. The number one way to do that is by building your own list, having your own tribe of followers. Now, if you're doing all of that on Facebook and your Facebook gets shut down, you're in big trouble, right? So you better, you better keep that in mind as well. Build your own email list. Diversify where you share your information. When I do a Facebook Live video like this, I share it in about 25 different places. I... And I've shared my process. You can go to my Facebook profile or you can search it. And it, I think, I don't remember what it's called, content or something with respect to how I share my content. And I've done it like three or four times as I change and improve how I do it. I go on and I do a Facebook Live and I show everybody exactly how I do it. But basically, I make a Facebook Live video on one of my pages. This is on my Be Me to Thrive page or Be Me. I don't remember which page it's on. That's terrible. I think it's, I just looked at it to set it up too. But it's on one of my obscure pages. I like to record on pages because it gives me more flexibility with respect to editing and adding subtitles and things. Now, I haven't done them for a while, but I can add subtitles. On these longer videos, I just don't do it because it takes me too long to edit them out. Um, I need a new assistant to help me with some of this stuff. But. So the first thing I do is I download that Facebook Live video. Then I upload that Facebook Live video to YouTube. There's one, my daily, my um, challenge that I'm doing for Supersize, I actually upload that to YouTube. Not YouTube. I do that, everything to YouTube. But in addition to YouTube and then sharing that seven places, I, for this challenge, I will share that on Instagram I will also share it on my LinkedIn. LinkedIn just started accepting and doing videos. So that was a good way for me to start sharing just a little bit of content in video format on LinkedIn. So it happened that you could do it like a few days before I started my last 30-day challenge. So I've got my 30-day my challenge there. And now I'm sharing both on LinkedIn and Instagram my 30-day challenge because I do that on my Instagram TV. And actually, the cool thing about that is it makes me keep under 10 minutes for that session, that lesson. And I think that's better for people. We busy business owners don't have really more than 10 minutes to listen to anybody go on and on like I do in my What's She Up To Now sometimes. So after I upload that to YouTube and disseminate it to six or seven different places, seven or seven places plus YouTube is eight. Then I strip out the voice, the audio part of that, and I upload that to my podcast using it platform called Libsyn. And on Libsyn, I can now disseminate that out to 16 more places. How amazing is that? So with one piece of content, one video that I make first thing in the morning, I can get that out to like 25 places really, really quickly and easily. Now I'm expanding on that. And as I build my team out to help me do that, I can get that information out to even more platforms. So if any one platform, I had my, uh, 
my Reddit shut down for three days because I didn't know I didn't I didn't know how to use Reddit or how to share on Reddit, and I accidentally shared on some places I guess that you can't share. I thought I was just sharing ran you know on, on my profile thing, but it wasn't. It would go to other pages, and so I got shut down for three days. But I didn't even care because it was going to all kinds of other places anyway. So those three days didn't really. I, and I'm not doing really anything on Reddit. If anybody knows how to use Reddit, I would love, you know, somebody to give me like a five minute rundown on what you should and shouldn't do on Reddit and how it works. Tumblr and other platforms like that too. You know, I never did Snapchat. I never got Snapchat. So I think that's a younger person's tool. But my whole point of the comment and the message is make sure you're following the guidelines of whatever platform you're using. And it's always been a rule on Facebook that you shouldn't advertise or use your personal profile page for business. It's for friends and family and for things like that. But a lot of us have gotten very lax over the years due to network marketing teachings and internet marketing teachings that, hey, just go ahead, do it on your personal profile. And when you get a lot of people on your personal profile, like me, I admit, it was tempting. It's tempting to test things there before you take them out to your ideal clients in your target market to find out, you know, if you've got typos, if you're making errors. And with my eyes, I need all the help I can get, right? Magnifying glass girl. I didn't even use my magnifying glass once today. That's crazy. Um, <clears throat> now I just did. So don't ever put all your eggs in one basket. Make sure you're building things that you can control. That's why we always want to take, you know, people outside of our world and bring them into our world. People outside our businesses and bring them into our businesses. And we want to capture their information so we can build a relationship with them and continue to interact with them. That is my message for today. I'm going to go and I gave myself two assignments today. One is I have to change my mind about something. And the other one is to do this um, daily activity. And then I'm going to, I've got a couple other personal things that I definitely have to hop on and get done today. That's it. Have a fantastic day. I will see you tomorrow with day 225 of what she up to now as I transition from the offline world to the online world. Have an awesome day. Jam Grandma out.